Hello everyone, my name is Vipul and we are from KSR Data Vision and we have started a series where we will be talking about multiple very very important um, data pipelines. So without any further ado, let's start with the very first pipeline which we are going to talk about about the series which I have. Uh, you are also welcome to share your queries and also some pipelines you would like to us to work on. So over here, um, over here, what we are doing, the ultimate purpose database MySQL and over here we have some tables and what we want is that we want to copy the data from the MySQL tables into the Snowflake data warehouse. And the requirement is that I should not be interfering with everything, uh, with anything at all. Everything should be scheduled and all the data should get automatically inserted from MySQL into the Snowflake Data Warehouse, right? So let's get started. Let us first of all um, go to MySQL. I have MySQL installations and um, from there we will see the table which we want to uh, extract to, okay? So our, the very first step which we will be doing, uh, we will go to our MySQL instance I have MySQL locally installed and we will be taking the data from a specific table and then um, what we want is that we want to extract the data from the table into a local folder in a file. Okay, so I will be generating a CSV file from a table and that file I will place into a local folder, right? So this is the very first thing which we want. Okay, okay. so this is my uh, MySQL. So I have installed MySQL on my local system and now I have a lot of tables. First of all, let us see one of the table which I want to extract. Okay, so I have a table. Let us look at the table first. Um, so the table name is sale. Um, so if I want to see the records in a table, I just say select star from the table name. Okay, and say execute. So here we can see that these are the columns of a specific table. So we have the salesman ID who did the trans transaction, the sale date when that transaction happened and the amount of transaction which happened. So over here we have transactions made by the salesman across multiple dates. So we have transaction on 20th of April 2024, we have transaction made on 22nd of April 2024, and we also have the transactions made on 21st of April 2024, okay? So now, the very first thing which we want to do is that we will write a very small query to extract the data from this table into a CSV file. And I want to download that CSV file into my local folder. Okay, so first of all, let me see if the, um, okay, that's fine. Okay, so first of all, what I want is that I will be creating some variables. Okay, so first of all, I will store the table name, which I want to extract into a variable table name, right? So this is pretty much straightforward. And then I have to end, um, we can also see the success or the failure of a specific query which we are running. Okay, so this was successful. So here you can see the status of the query which we just ran, okay. And then I want to store the location of the folder where I want to download the file, okay. So I have a variable called as output file and in it, in it I will store the location. So here I am saying that I want to download the file to my D drive and the name of the file is going to be abc.csv. Let us run that as well. Okay, so now the next thing what we have to do is that we have to extract the column names of this specific table. So in that case, we will see uh, how we can do that. So we will say select. So group concat is a very important um, command in MySQL and it helps you to concatenate the various column names or any specific um, column values as well. Okay. So we said, I want to concat the column names into the variable column names from this schema, information schema dot columns. So the information schema dot columns contains the column names of all the tables in my MySQL. Okay. And I will also specify that I want to, I want to fetch the columns of this table 
which is cell which is stored in this table name variable okay so let us store the column names into this one okay okay that's great so we have stored this variable value into the column names just in case if you want to see how this output looks like or what is in this variable we can do it very easily by saying select star from and then you can also see that or you can um you can say select star from this column name so it will also help you to uh, see the output okay so this way you can also see what is inside of this particular variable okay and now uh, we have the table we have the table we have the columns and then we have the location where we want to save the file now we will write a very quick small query for that purpose so we will say that we will create a query so the variable name is query and over here we are concatenating two results so first of all we are saying that select everything from the column names so this column names has all the columns names which we have just extracted for a specific table and i want to union it with the actual data within that table so that is why i can say that select star from the table name this is the table name which uh, this is the this variable has the table name and on top of that i can only also set up the where clause okay so here you can see that if i want to extract the data for a specific sale date then i can also do it like this using the where clause so what this statement will do first of all it will take the column names for this table sale and then it will union that result on this query so it will have the sales data for this specific date only and then it will take this output so this is your inner query which has the name a and then it will put that output into the out file which we had specified earlier which is indeed right so let us create this query and we have to have this query in a uh, you can say that it is a string type of value so our query is ready let us prepare the statement so prepare statement from the query which we have just created okay okay great so the query has been generated and now let us execute the statement okay, okay. so i guess the file is already there let me first of all remove the file which we have placed already so let me remove it by going okay so I can go to my D drive and over here, I should already have the file. So let me remove the previous file. And now let me execute the statement again. So execute the statement. Let's do it now. Okay, great. So now the execution has been done successfully. So over here, you can see that we have only four records because there are only three records which have been meeting this criteria and one record we have the header. Let us check the file which has been generated. So, okay so this is the file and if i open with the notepad so here you can see that this is a tab delimited file which has been generated so here you can see that we have only three records from in, from this table and the fourth record is the header column okay that's great so we have downloaded the data from mysql into my local folder right so now my second requirement is this okay so now this 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 is done so i uh and one more thing if you want to automate this thing if you uh, if you just want to automate the query which we have just run you can use something called as event so we can create events in mysql so they are very easy to create so here we can say that i want to create an event then i give the name of the event and then i can create a schedule so here the schedule which I am creating is that it the query which I will provide beneath it will run on every hour. Okay, so here I have on schedule every one hour, and this event is enabled. And after do I provide the same SQL query which we have just discussed. Okay, so here you can see that uh, this query which we just discussed will be provided into this event, and then this event will run every hour and then it will generate a file on a hourly basis if you want to see the event which we have just created then we can run something called as show events 
and over here you can see that an event has been generated so we have the event uh, name e hourly it is recurring and interval field this hour the status is it starts on now on this specific date and then all the specific details which you can see for your events so now this event will run every hour and every hour it will extract the data from that table into my file okay so we have done this part where the file will be generated automatically into my local folder every hour based on any variable so one more thing which you can see over here is that when we were creating the select query from the table we can also use other variables okay so just in case if you have some specific criteria let's say if you want to take those files or take those resource uh, those records from your table which should match your system date then you can also use the date functions as well on top of that then it will give you those records which were generated today or only those sale dates which were created yesterday so this way it will give you the records on all, all time it will give you the new records okay okay great so we have achieved a very good thing and every hour we are getting a file into our local system right now what i want is that i want to upload this files which are in my local folder into my s3 bucket there are a lot of ways to do that to do that um we can also use the copy put command in my snowflake data warehouse and through that i can also do that but right now what i want i want to do the copy of the files from my local system into s3 bucket using a python script i'll show you a very small python script we can have a lot of different ways to do that in the python script as well but i'll show you a very small code which will help us to do that okay so over here first of all when i want to create when i want to interact with the aws services i have to import something called as boto3 so this boto3 you can have it on your system as well if you go to your um, command prompt you can say if you want to install any package provided your python is installed on your system then you can simply say pip install and then the package boto3 so this way you can install the boto3 package but before running this boot before running this uh, command you have to make sure that python is already installed how you can make sure that python is installed if you write python then you should get this prompt okay but if you are not getting this prompt then you have to first of all install python in your system but if python is installed then you can pip install the boto3 and now what i am doing um so this is a very small code which you can see over here first of all i am creating a session so session is an uh, is a function within your boto3 so here you can see that uh, boto3 dot session and in this session i provide the aws access key id and aws secret access key so over here i am providing the connection details and it belongs to a user who is already there in my aws account okay and then i can use this session and then i can access the s3 resource so it is very simple and straightforward code and now we are connected to the s3 now i can use the uh, upload file function in the s3 func in the s3 class and then i can use this to upload the file from my local system into my aws account so what i have to provide is the file name which i want to upload so over here i have um so in instead of ctxt i have this abc.csv file so i have this abd abc.csv and then this is the bucket in which i want to upload the file okay so i can also show you in my aws account so if i go to my so i am already logged into my snowflake data as uh, to my aws account so over here you can see that i have one bucket in my aws account so this is the bucket in which i want to load the file so i have provided this is the file name and the file name is abc.csv and the bucket name is this one and then in the key i can also provide if i want to upload the file to a specific folder within my uh, aws account okay so over here 
if I go to this bucket over here, I have another folder called as no pipe. Okay. So over here, you can see that currently there is no file. Okay. And now what this code will do, this code will upload this specific file abc.csv into first of all this bucket. And within this bucket, I have this folder no pipe. And then this is going to be the file name, which I'm going to use instead of txt, I can also, I will use csv. Okay. That's it. Very simple code. Let us execute this code and let's see the outcome. Okay. So to execute this code, I will just say the um, extract code.py. So this is the code name. So here we can see that um, I can use it like this. So I will just say uh, extract code.py and hit enter. Okay. And okay. Now let's see if the file is now available in my AWS account. Okay. Let me try it again. So now uh, let's extract this code. Uh, so now I am in the right directory. So I have my code in day drive. So if I want to run this code, extract code.py, I say Python. So I say, first of all, because it is a Python code. So I have to say Python. Then I have to say extract code.py. Okay. So it will extract this code. Uh, it will execute this code and it will place this file <coughs> into my Snowflake data warehouse bucket into this uh this folder so let us refresh okay that's great that's awesome we have the file in my aws s3 bucket that is great so we are making a good progress now so let us see what is the next task which we have to do okay before that we have achieved this thing so our python script is able to execute or it is able to move my files from the local folder into the s3 bucket but I do not want to execute my Python code every time, but I want it to be automatically scheduled. There are a lot of ways which I can use. I can use my, um, I mean, we can use any scheduling tool. Uh, we can use the um, Airflow for that. So we have a lot of multiple cloud tools available, which can, which can be used for scheduling. But over here, the scheduling part of this Python script we can also do it in the windows task scheduler okay so we will see how we can schedule the python script execution into the uh, using the task scheduler okay. so over here to create any task so we will first of all create a task which we want to schedule okay so first of all we can go either to create a basic task or we can also create a task so over here, using this option, we can see how we can create, automate any task in the windows, okay? So one thing which we have to remember is this create task option is available in windows only, okay? So if you are using the another operating system, then it will not be available, okay? Okay, so over here, first of all, we provide the task name. Um, so task name can be um, upload, um, load s3 file okay so this is going to upload the file to s3 bucket and then um you can choose any option so i am going with the default so here it says run only when the user is logged in okay that's great let us go to the next option um we will go to triggers okay, okay. we will go to triggers and the triggers will help us to define how or where um based on what scenario i want to trigger this specific task right so first of all let us see so over here we can create a new trigger so now as a part of the trigger i will say that i want to run this specific script or a specific thing on a daily basis let's say i want it to run from tomorrow so from tomorrow or from monday it will start and it will run at morning 5 am okay 0, 05 and then 00, 0 and then 00. 0. What this will do, this will execute this script on it. Right now, we have not provided the script, but anything what we are going to schedule, it is going to be scheduled on a daily basis. Okay. So over here, okay, that is fine. I want to run something on a daily basis at 5 a.m. Okay. You can also 
say uh, the other option uh, you can go to expire when or long or when you want this specific trigger to end but i do not want to set up that right now so i will give the i will now go to the next tab which is actions in the actions this is now the important thing for us so first of all over here we will have to provide the action which will get executed when my task will run or whenever this trigger will happen over here as a part of this section now i want to execute my python script so i will go to new and over here i will keep the default option uh, start a program okay so it will start some program so over here in the program or script we have to give the location where our python is installed not the code but where the python.exe is available so i will go there and then i will find it so here you can see the path so for me this is the path where my python is installed so i have python 3.11 installed on my system over here i can see this python.exe okay so this is the executed file executable file of python and then in the second option in the add arguments i will provide the name of the file a python file which i want to execute so let me show you where it is so here it is in the d drive so i have this abc.csv so i will say that i want to execute oh not this one sorry so i have to give the this is the python code so i'll say extract code.csv extract code.python.py okay and then start in is also very important it if the folder where your code is available is different from the folder where your python execution file is available then you will have to provide it okay? in my case my uh, my python code is in d drive so that is where it will say that my execution executable file is there my code is there and I, my code is in d drive okay that's all and i have given all the different if you want you can also give additional conditions and you can also give additional settings as well okay that's good let us schedule this task and this task will now be running from monday every day and that is great okay so now our task is also created awesome so now we are uh, one step further and we have also automated this step where the file from my local folder will be copied into the s3 bucket and now the final step is i want this a this file which is in my s3 bucket to be automatically consumed within my snowflake data warehouse table using a snow pipe okay it's because i do not want to upload the file automatically i do not want to upload the file manually but i want this file to be uploaded automatically okay so for that let us go to snowflake data warehouse and do the steps which will help us to create the snow pipe and all the connection settings okay so now here you can see there are a lot of things going on okay and we will also see what all these in different objects are required to do that this is not all those steps may not be required but this is the best practice which we are going to talk about right now okay so first of all the very first thing which we have to create in the snowflake data warehouse is something called as integration object the integration object here you can see this helps us to uh, to have a connection to my iam roles in the aws account and the bucket which i want to access in my snowflake data warehouse account so over here in the integration object will link these two entities together this is a very great feature in the snowflake data warehouse so over here let us see how we can create an integration object so here i am inside the snowflake data warehouse so to create an integration object you can omit this or replace and you can just go with the create storage integration so the storage integration which i want to create is named as s3 int the type of the storage integration is external stage the storage provider is s3 i want it to be enabled and i need to provide these two details let us see how we can get that 
So first of all, I have to provide the AWS role ARN. So if I go to my, so now I am in AWS account. So I go to IAM, which is the identity and access management. And over here, I will show you the role which I want to use. So this is the role which we just created. It is called a Snowpipe role. And over here, this role has, ex has full access to my S3 buckets. Okay, that's fine. And over here, if you come here, you can copy the AWS role ARN. So this is the ARN which I'll copy paste and I will provide over here. And then on top of that, I also have to provide the bucket or the folder name which I want to access. So now that I can also show you. So I'll go to S3. So this folder is going to be the same where we just uploaded the file from my local system into the S3 bucket. So if I go here and over here in this no pipe, so over here, I do not have to provide the file name, but over here you can get the path of your snow pipe folder where you want the connection to be created. So here you can get that. Okay. So you can copy it from here and then you can paste it over here and then you can provide it in the allowed location. We can have multiple uh, allowed locations as well. So that is also allowed. So if you want to have multiple locations configured, then you also you can do that. Now, once your integration object is created, we have to go to something called as describe integration S3 INT. This will give me additional information which is required to configure my connection to the AWS account. So over here, what I will need, I will have to go to my role. So if I go back to my role over here, I will have to provide some of the additional information. So if I go to roles and over here, I have something called as trust relationships. And if I come to this tab, I go to edit trust policy and over here, uh, the properties which I get here like this, the storage AWS external ID has to be provided here and this one the uh, the uh, a storage aws iam user arn has to be provided here okay so these two things are very important so um, we will have a separate video where we will tell you how we can create all these things but right now we have a lot to cover so that is why we have skipped those steps for now okay okay great so now our integration object is created which is now pointing to my role layer in and my S3 bucket. Now the next thing which I want to create in my Snowflake data warehouse. Now what I want. Okay. So next thing which I want to create is the table where I want to import my data. So I'll create this table. I will say create or replace a table. And this is the database and schema where I want to create the table. So the table name is going to be the salesman. It has only three columns, which I, which we have already seen, which we have just extracted. Okay. So now here we have the salesman ID. We have salesman ID. We have sale date and we have sale amount. So we will create the similar structure in the Snowflake data warehouse as well. The salesman ID, sale date and the sale amount. Okay. So this is also important because we have to create this table because this is where we want to store the data. So this is done and this is done. Okay. And now the next thing which we want to create is the file format object. So now in the file format object, we will give the properties about the file which we want to load in the Snowflake data warehouse. As you might have seen till now, the file which has been loaded is a tab delimited file. So that is why we have to say create or replace a file format. This is the file format name. The type of the file is CSV. The field delimiter is a tab. I do not want the header and the null should be treated like this. And I want the empty field to be treated as null as well. Okay. So I have defined the file which I want to load. So this is also done. Now the next thing which I have to create is something called as stage object. So here you can see in the arrows that the stage objects is going to require the integration object 
and the file format which we have just created. So now here we will say that I want to create a stage object. This is the URL which I want to access the same one uh, where the file is. The storage integration which we just created and the file format which we just created. So let us list this stage name to see the file available and to make sure that the connection is working fine. So if I want to see the files in this specific location, which is pointed out by the stage, then I can say list at the rate stage name. Okay, great. We can see this file. It is very small, but that is fine. We have this file loaded and we can access the this file as well. So, and the last step which we want to do is that we have to create something called as pipe. So the pipe is something which is going to help us to create the connection uh, and to create a SNS connection to the AWS so that as soon as a file is available in my S3 bucket, that file will, uh, will send a notification. My bucket will send a notification to the Snowflake Data Warehouse that a file has been generated and it is it then it will be loaded into my this table in the Snowflake Data Warehouse. Okay, great. So the so here you can see here we will say create or replace pipe. This is the pipe name. Auto ingest is equal to true. And after that, as I will provide the copy command. So let us run this copy command to make sure that the file is getting successfully loaded or not. Okay, that is great. We are able to load the three files. That is awesome. And if you want to see the records in this table, we can say select star from um, the table name is salesman. Okay, let us execute. Okay, that's great. Oh, I guess um, I had already executed this query previously. So first of all, let me truncate this table before running this query. So I can say truncate table and then the table name. Okay, great. Okay, so we do not have any records now. So now let us run this copy into command again. Now I should have only three records. Okay, that's great. So I have three records and now I have always also created the pipe. Okay, there are few more configurations which are required when I create a pipe. So if I go to describe pipe, we additionally have to create a connection the SNS SQS connection between my uh, source and within my Snowflake data warehouse. Okay, so I'll show you how you can do that. If I go to S3 bucket, in the S3 bucket, if we go to the uh, go to the bucket first of all, and then if I go to properties, over here we have something called as event notification. The event notification is very important because here we will define when that events will be generated. This is the event name, event snow pipe. And over here, I want to create an event whenever anything happens. Either a file is put, whether a file is post, copied or anything else happens. And then finally, going all the way down, I will specify that I want to create a SQS queue. And this SQ, SQARN, is which I will get when I will do the describe by pipe name. So this is the notification channel which I have to provide over here. Okay, that's great. So we have done this as well. So now because our pipe is also ready, now we have done the entire architecture and now uh, the files will get automatically generated from my MySQL using the event into my local folder the Python script will load all the files from my local folder into the S3 bucket. And then finally, my snow pipe will load those files into the Snowflake data warehouse table. That's great. So that was a very good small project which we have just created. If you would like to see more videos on this, do let us know what pipeline you want to see. If you are interested in seeing how the DPT connects to the Snowflake data warehouse, or how you can use the um, airflow for that. Or if you have any complex pipeline in your mind, do let us know in the comment section and we will have a very good uh, uh, the uh, videos coming up as well 
over there you can see more pipelines where we will share some of the insights of how you can automatically how you can create this automatic pipeline thank you so much for watching this video have a great day bye bye